Hello everyone and welcome to our new video on Helm Chart Dependency Management. Okay, uh, this video is in continuation to our previous videos on Helm and uh, so we we have aggregated all the videos um, and the topics that you need to learn within the Helm. So if you have not covered our previous videos, I will suggest you to go through those videos and then come down to this video to have better understanding of the Helm overall. That being said, let's get started with this video. So in this video, we are going to discuss about the Helm chart dependency management. Now, what is this dependency management and why will we uh, actually needing it? So you need to understand that when you are working on the complex applications that may be dependent upon more than one uh, thing. That is, let's say your uh, application is dependent upon a database and without the database, your application won't come up and running. So. This is what we call as a dependency because your application is now dependent upon that database. So that is basically your dependency within the Helm itself. Okay. Now within the Helm, you are able to manage the dependencies. So Helm chart dependency management allows you to easily manage these dependencies of your uh, Helm charts. Dependencies are often used for deploying the complex applications or services that require multiple components to be deployed uh, together. Okay. So um uh, let's see uh, uh, how we can manage the dependencies for managing the dependencies you are required to create what is known as requirements.yml file the requirements.yml file allows you to specify the dependencies for your helm charts so you can specify the name of the chart the version and the repository where the chart is located okay so that way you are basically indicating that the Helm chart that you are going to deploy is basically dependent upon another chart of another version and the repository. So you can specify that inside the requirements.yml file. And this is very similar to how we do it in Python. We have a requirements file and we specify all the dependencies there and then the Python is able to execute. Similarly is with the case with the Helm that it looks at this requirements.yml file and basically identifies that uh, the current uh, chart that you are deploying is dependent upon another chart and then it go ahead and deploy that first and then your current chart like that, right? So this is how it is able to meet the dependencies requirement. Now, here is an example of a dependency in the requirements.yml file. Uh, so uh, we have taken an example of a PostgreSQL, which is a database, right? So in this example, we have specified that as a dependency and we have explained, we have put the repository where that uh, a dependency can be downloaded from. Okay, so in this example, PostgreSQL chart uh, is specified as a dependency with a version 0.8.xx, which can be downloaded from a repository, uh, example.com. Okay, so you can include multiple dependencies in the requirements.yml file uh, with a, a hyphen uh, dash symbol, okay, uh, which basically creates it as a form of a list. So depending upon that, uh, your current chart, your dependencies will be met first and then your uh, requirements will be proceeded ahead like that, right? So this is how uh, uh, Helm will be able to handle the dependencies. Now, once you have defined the dependencies inside your requirements.yml file, you can install them using the Helm dependency update command. This command actually is going to download, okay, Helm dependency update, okay? So this command is going to download the dependencies and store them in the charts directories of your Helm chart. So um, uh, uh, how you are going to execute it? You can follow this example where we have uh, run Helm dependency update. Uh, basically what happens in the background? When you run this command, it looks for the dependencies and it goes to those uh, uh, URLs where it can be downloaded and it basically downloads those uh, charts and put it inside your current chart. So that is how it is making sure all the dependencies are available. Uh, when it tries to deploy your application, that would be successful as well. Okay, so this command will download the dependencies specified in the requirements.yml into the my chart directory. Okay, now uh, once you have done this, uh, you can use the dependency charts. Uh, now, once the dependencies are downloaded, you can use them in your Helm charts templates as if uh, they were a regular Kubernetes objects, okay? So you can refer to the dependency templates using dot chart dot name and dot chart dot version variables. So here is an example for you, which you can follow for managing the dependencies. So uh, in this, we are using a logical statement of if uh, dot values dot postgres sql enabled, right? So what we are saying is that inside, uh, uh, if the value for postgres sql is enabled, Okay, then go ahead and use API version v1 kind service metadata chart name. Uh, you can put the unique application name followed by PostgreSQL 
Um, a specification ports PostgreSQL 5.4.3.2, target port 5.4.3.2, and then again the chart name PostgreSQL and type cluster IP. Okay, and then you can write the deployment. Now, interesting thing that you are seeing over here is that uh, this PostgreSQL enabled uh, basically this value that we are trying to uh, use for running the entire YAML configuration um, within our Helm is actually coming from an another chart which was specified which was downloaded as a dependency and we are using as if that this uh, chart has been written by us in our local uh, charts and uh, uh, the helm is able to use it okay so that is how we are uh, able to fetch the dependency now this is a service file and this is a deployment file for the um, postgres sql okay and uh, then you are going to find that we have uh, created this uh, deployment file and uh, we have specified the user and the values for the PostgreSQL now. And uh, uh, then we put have, uh, put an end. Now this end is basically denoting the end for the if statement that we have initially specified, right? So this is a conditional statement. If you are going to enable PostgreSQL, then only this configuration is going to take place. Otherwise it's going to omit that out, right? So if I say my application and I say PostgreSQL is enabled, right? So then this configuration get executed. If not, then it's not going to create the PostgreSQL. Okay, so in this example, PostgreSQL dependency is used to create a service and deployment uh, for PostgreSQL database. So basically the variable, uh, the dot chart name and dot chart version are used to refer to the name and version of the Helm chart respectively. If condition um, for the values PostgreSQL enable condition allows you to enable or disable the dependencies with the value in the values.yaml file. Okay, so uh, this, this value should be present. Basically this value, okay, should be present in your values.yaml file. Uh, there is PostgreSQL uh, should be set to enable, then only this value, uh, this uh, PostgreSQL will be created. If you set it to disabled, then it won't be created. Okay. Now update dependencies. You can update the dependencies of your Helm chart with the Helm dependency update command. This command actually downloads the latest version of the dependencies and store them inside your charts directory that we already discussed. So uh, you can specify Helm dependency update. So it will download all the dependencies and put it inside your current chart. So this will get downloaded uh, as specified in the requirements.yml file that we already discussed. So in summary, uh, managing the dependencies in the Helm charts is an important aspect for deploying our complex application or services. By defining um, in the requirements.yml file, installing them the Helm dependency update command and referring to them in your Helm chart templates, you can create more flexible and reusable Helm charts. The dependency management feature of Helm allows you to update dependencies easily and keep your charts up to date uh, with the latest version of the dependent components. By using this feature, you can simply uh, uh, file and streamline your deployment process and reduce the risk of errors and inconsistencies in your application or services like that. Okay, so uh, you would see that there are numerous advantages of using this dependency management because uh, that way you are able to uh, use the other services on which your services are dependent and you can uh, efficiently manage it and reuse the Helm charts, right? Uh, you don't have to recreate again and again and duplicate the same stuff again and again. So that kind of thing is uh, handled by the dependency management, okay? And uh, that way also you, you can keep your charts up to date. Like suppose if I have to change the PostgreSQL version over there, then the latest version would eventually be fetched and uh, maintained for me as well. So I don't need to go at several places and change the version accordingly to manage that my same version of PostgreSQL should be running across the different configuration file and I have to open each one and make a change. Instead, I'm just going to make a change inside one of them and eventually I can expect that most of the application is going to pick up the, those same configurations so I can um, better stick to the IAC practices and uh, this is going to reduce the risk of error and inconsistency in the applications as well for me okay so this is how we can manage the uh, uh, dependencies okay all right so guys this completes our theory part and next we are going to start with the labs for all the theory part that we have covered for the hand till now so stay tuned um if you have not subscribed to our channel do subscribe to our channel and uh, in the ahead videos you can uh, expect the practical aspect of the hen i'm going to create a separate series for it 
so that people who are directly interested more in hands-on approach to Helm can follow it and do the hands-on. And uh, people who are more aware of the theory always understand that when you're going through the theory, it's, it will help you in the interview process and the better understanding and troubleshooting aspects. But it's particularly fine if you want to go through the practical part, go and uh, follow the practical series that I'm going to upload for the Helm and you can follow and practice do the hands-on directly. All right, so that's all. Uh, if you are not subscribed to our channel, do subscribe to our channel for uh, getting up-to-date videos. And uh, that's all for this video. Thank you.